Joining us in the studio is Professor Philipp Richter from the Institute of Astrophysics in Potsdam, an astronomer who relies in his research also on the data of Hubble. Now, we just heard by Bob Fosbury that he's dreaming of finding a second Earth, a green planet. Do you think we'll, it'll one day go even further and we'll find civilizations out there? I think uh, it will be possible to find uh, life out there in a, on a planet uh, different than the Earth, but... Um, intelligent? Intelligent. I think there is out there, but I think it's very hard to, uh, to, to see any signals of intelligent life out there. Um, but uh, the Hubble Space Telescope uh, is certainly, uh, was certainly a big great breakthrough to work with uh, on this field, and uh, I'm sure that uh, with other instruments we'll find uh, life on other you, planets. You are not looking for life on other planets, you do something differently with uh, uh, Hubble's data. What do you actually do? Um, my research field is the so-called intergalactic medium, that's far from any uh, life. It's uh, in fact a very thin plasma that uh, sits uh, between galaxies. It's a very thin gas and that's the material in fact uh, from which galaxies and stars in galaxies are forming. Uh, it's mm -hmm. basically the fuel for star formation in the universe. Mm -hmm. What are actually the discoveries we would not have made without Hubble? I think one of the major um, discoveries where Hubble was involved is in fact the um, detection that the universe is expanding um, in an accelerating mode um, that gives in for uh, a thing that we would call dark energy. Mm -hmm. And I think a second big breakthrough was uh, the way Hubble could look very deep into the universe, the uh, famous Hubble deep field mm -hmm. that showed us mm -hmm. galaxies at the very uh, early beginnings when galaxies were forming, so basically the, the, the babies of the galaxies. And so we now are able to see how galaxies are evolving through time. Just one word about this dark energy. I but Einstein was already talking about it. You think one day we'll find out what it actually is? I think uh, it, it takes uh, the combined effort of, from astrophysics and physics uh, to think beyond the borders that we currently have in our head, uh, the current physics. And yes, I think in uh, future generations uh, we will know what dark energy is and know what dark matter is. It will and be so some sort of revolution. It certainly will, yes. Thanks a lot. Up to you, Philipp Richter. As big as the enthusiasm for Hubble is, astronomers of course want more, that's human nature, and they get more too. Hubble's successor is already being developed and assembled. It's the James Webb Telescope. Its mirror will be three times as large as Hubble's. It will scan the heat radiation spectrum in the cosmos and it will be so sensitive that, if it were earthbound, it would even be able to photograph the spectrum of a glowing cigarette on the moon. James Webb won't be launched until 2013, but we can already show you it today. The new telescope is designed to find regions of space so far away that even Hubble can't see them. Right to the edge of the visible universe where the first stars were born and where young galaxies formed the James Webb Space Telescope's mission is to catch their light. It's expected to provide insights into the early history of the universe. Researchers know that all the stars and galaxies they see today formed from diffuse masses of gas, but how did it happen? To find some answers, the new James Webb Telescope must gather as much light as possible. And for that, it needs a really big mirror. So big, it has to be folded up in 18 pieces to fit into the launch vehicle. Once in space, it will unfold to its full size. You almost have to fabricate a mirror that works like an enormous mirror. It has to be ground as if its dimensions are huge. But of course, what you have is these individual parts, the segments. Each segment has to be aligned so precisely that afterwards we end up with good, sharp pictures. The light emanating from the first stars and galaxies is extremely weak. It travels through the universe more than 13 and a half billion years before it reaches Earth. James Webb will examine the world in the infrared part of the light spectrum. That's the only way to catch the faint radiation emitted by stars and galaxies at the edge of the universe. And the only way to see through the dust clouds between Earth and distant space. The new telescope must be kept very cold, below minus 220 degrees Celsius. 
The heat from the sun and earth would blind it, so a giant shield will protect its sight. In 2013, if all goes well, James Webb will start focusing on the early cosmos. Joining us again in the studio is the astronomer Professor Philipp Richter. Now, we know that Hubble already gets very close to the Big Bang, to the beginning of our universe, and James Webb might get even further back in the history of the universe. What's so interesting about that time? It's basically the time that uh, the galaxies and the first stars uh, were born. So we basically look back in our childhood mm -hmm. um, how everything began. And so when the first stars have formed, then galaxies looked very different than they are today. And then they assembled by the accretion of material mm -hmm. from the intergalactic medium, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then after time, uh, galaxies evolved and now they look like as they look like, we observe today, but as usual, we want to find out how everything began. Mm -hmm. And how come James Webb can look even back further in history? Um, the problem is, or it's not a problem, but the fact is that the universe is expanding, is that signals that come from the very beginning are redshifted. That means that mm -hmm. signals that are emitted in a certain region in the wavelength region of the light is now visible in a completely different region and mm -hmm. therefore we need a telescope that is in space an infrared telescope that can bring us this information uh, to us so that we can now understand what's going on any surprises you can expect up there um, Yes, I, I expect there will be surprises, you but of course, so. if I could predict them, uh, um, that would make things, of course, easier. Now, in, in fact, we, uh, we probably will find out about a very unsecure um, timeline that we not really understand so far. When was the first real galaxies were formed? How do the first stars look like and what kind mm -hmm. of uh, light do they uh, produce? Mm -hmm. And I think with the James Webb Telescope, we will learn much more about these early stages of the universe. Mm -hmm. There is actually a lot of wreckage of defunct satellites piled up in space. Is uh, Hubble maybe in danger of being hit? I think, yes, Hubble is in danger uh, and therefore the NASA uh, administration also have various uh, certain rules uh, that uh, prohibit, for instance, observations under conditions of danger. The James Webb Telescope is a bit more secure because it's in a very different orbit um, at a Lagrangian point and therefore the likelihood of, uh, um, of impact of, of uh, this trash uh, is, is, is very small for the very James Webb Telescope. For the best. Thanks a lot yeah. for the talk, Professor Richter.